for whosoever should be found worthy shall possess the power of Thor. We don't possess the power of Thor, nor are we worthy, but we do have a lot of opinions. Speak for yourself, my opinions are always worthy. Welcome back to I2I, the place where we talk about anything and everything Disney. My name's Kyle. And my name is Jessica. And before we get started, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. This edition of Disney Through Our Eyes, we're going to be doing a spoiler-filled movie. It's not spoiler-filled, spoiler-free. See, apparently I, my opinions are not worthy because I can't even get them straight. Spoiler-free movie review of Thor, Love and Thunder. Or if you really want to have a tongue twister, Thor 4. Say that five times. I've fast. never even heard anybody Thor call it Thor Four. Like you were the, literally the only person on the planet when that it, it that. first came out and was well, it was first announced. Everybody was saying Thor Four, and it was like, oh wow, that's a tongue twister. Well, I think there. that's why they did Thor Love and Thunder. Well, of course. But also Thor Three, which is also hard to say. No, but Thor Three was Ragnarok. It was that's what Thor I'm one. saying. Yes, that's. That Thor. was my point. Is there was no Thor Three? It was Thor Ragnarok. Tongue twisters aside, spoiler free. This is what a safe place to be. We're gonna do our best to not delve into any of that uh, that we've already seen in the movie, and we don't want it's you guys. It's not in the trailer. We're exactly. not talking about it. Exactly. So anything we say here can be found in the trailers. We're gonna give you three reasons to watch, and a couple of reasons maybe that you may find reasons not to like it or not want to see it or things like may, that. Might skip it. Might skip it or things like that. Just full you know range of perspectives here on Thor four. I just want to say it now. Thor love and thunder. I just want to say it now because That's it's not like, a thing. Thor, Love, and Thunder. Thor, Love, and Thunder. All right, reason number one, it's going to be the most obvious for you to go watch Thor, Love, and Thunder. It's the comedy. Obviously. Hilarious. It involves Thor. Like, let's look at all the movies that Thor has been in recently, and especially when Thor was Fat Thor, who we all loved the most. I did we, though? I did. Fat Thor is my favorite version of Thor. <laughs> well, you get, this is not a spoiler because in the trailers you get to see him for a little bit in there. The dad bod to god bod as they call it. In that this. was awesome. That was a funny when, joke. Yeah, when they said dad bod to god bod. That, that was, was good. A, that was a real funny one. We know all knew that one was coming right there. So one of the things I love that they have embraced, starting with Ragnarok especially, the idea that yeah this thor stuff this asgardian stuff it's all weird and fantastical let's just have fun with it you know let's not stop trying to be so serious with it and i right. think that's like really what's kind of taken marvel to a new level is obviously what they've done with a lot of other content and other characters but i think thor is like the prime example of what you can do of taking something that yeah you might want you might want to be like more intense and intense serious. And, yeah but then just let's have fun with it and it shows a good character arc for as well. Well, for sure. And also you have the Guardians of the Galaxy in the movie. Oh, yeah. And they're, good. they're hilarious to begin with. And then you have the rock guy that I can't remember Korg. his name. Korg. Korg. He's pretty funny, too. Well, and it comes from director Taika Waititi. And I know okay. He's the one who did Ragnarok. He's also done a lot of, like, he's a, he's got a theater uh, background, I believe. Okay. So he's very good at, like, you know, comedic timing and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And I love his, he's the guy who voices Korg. That's his voice in the back there. So he just... Know. I think it this particularly takes on from what I understand the personality of Taika Waititi okay. very well, and I think you could almost see like he was very reined in with Ragnarok. Oh no, he went full. Yeah, Taika. this was even funnier than Ragnarok. To me. <laughs> Just full blown what he wanted to do in terms of com comedy. Yeah, he got to do it in this one. All right, reason number two, Jessica. So I liked this one because, as we all know, if you know anything about me, I am not a Marvel person. I do not understand the world building. It is just not something my brain can comprehend, even though I have seen all of the movies. Um, so I really appreciated that this movie was a little more geared towards people like me who maybe couldn't understand the villains in some of the other movies. This villain was really easy to understand. You got a quick background at the beginning of the movie about the villain. You knew exactly enough to understand why he was a villain. And that's all you needed to know. I don't need all of these stories like freaking... Y'all, y'all Marvel people that understand, like, Avengers Endgame and how Vision has all of these special powers and all of these things. And then there's Black You're Widow and Wanda like right and all of these people Back and Wasp and, you know, all of these things. So, Gore. in Love and Thunder, Gore was easy 
from like literally minute five of the movie. I was like, got it. You Super know, cool. I know this wasn't the movie's fault or anything, but the comics came up with the character Gore and Thor. Could we like pick like any more alliteration right? going on there? It's okay. It was easy. Gore and Thor. I knew Gore. and I even knew what his weapon was and what his goal was. Like, I just felt like this was really easy compared to some of the Marvel so, movies. So there's a good balance here and I will use Thor The Dark World, the second one, as a good reference for you, like what you just said. Like they went super simplistic to the point where you didn't even care about the villain in that yeah, that's one. Fair, that's fair. And they, there was a time where I thought that Gore was gonna become that almost, but then I found myself, oh, no. They, they did add a couple things that I didn't understand. So I was like, right. oh yeah, this is still Marvel. I don't understand it. But I think they found the way to, if you're going to have these characters that, let me just say it this way, that you're not going to see a lot of probably in the future that you, you know, want to give enough complexity to them, but not too much, but also don't be too simple. And I think that's where right. you probably connected with it because you could act, there wasn't enough in there to where you had to like really know everything about the character. Exactly. Just understand what you need to know about the Just this from this very movie, I felt like I could plop down in this movie and be fine. Yes. I didn't need to read 200 million comic books or watch. <laughs> well, I didn't either. 75 Marvel movies well, that did prior. Either. And I have done as well. All right, reason number three that you will like this film is because of what they do with the character of Thor. Once again, reinventing him, and I would take yeah. it a step further to say that they are moving him into a new phase of life. If you had asked me that, um, who's gonna get a fourth movie first? I would have said Iron Man, Captain America, or even- um, How could Iron Man, isn't Iron Man? Spoilers for that in case you haven't seen that. I didn't say <laughs> it. I just said, isn't Iron Man? Yes, but that's my point is like, I would have put Thor at the, you know, back half of getting a fourth, maybe a fifth, maybe a sixth movie because just it wasn't like most fan favorite of the traditional Avengers okay. type of films. But here we are. And I think that's a testament here to, we well, yes, it's a, here we are. It's a testament because of Taika, but also Marvel, Kevin Feige recognizing what they needed to do with the character to make it connect more of the fans. It started in Ragnarok and brought it over to here. I'm not going to sit here and say that Thor uh, Love and Thunder was perfect. It is not my favorite Marvel film out there, but what they do with Thor of new layers adding to him, yeah. new journeys for him to go on. And now I find myself in a very important thing that he goes through in this film, some bit of a tragedy too. I'm excited for what the future holds for him yeah. because I think there's an opportunity for more stories outside of some of the things that we're familiar with him about to be told. And that goes you know, back to making him more comedic, more deep. And I guess if you want to throw dad bods in there too, throwing that out. Do you think we'll ever see dad bod again? Probably not. <laughs> he, he's off the depression train, so he's back to normal. Let's hope, you know, I mean, I guess if somebody comes around with infinity stones again, he might uh, go back. In That's there. true. I'm not Go saying, for the head. I'm not saying that his depression was not justified because it really was. <laughs> it's kind of your fault, dude. Uh, anyway. Still justified. It's, All right. So reasons you might not. We got, we'll try to give one each usually that you may not like. It's something just to keep in mind that may not be like most favorable thing about the yeah. movie. So my, mine is simple. It's really because I did enjoy the movie. I just think something to keep in mind is that this is not a traditional Marvel movie in like Spider-Man where you feel like you can take your whole family at any age they can go. There were a couple of scenes that maybe, you know, young kids probably shouldn't see or you might have some questions for them after or they might have questions for you, but that's really it for me. That it, what we're referencing is in the trailer, just not as clearly seen. So. <laughs> you need to keep that in mind for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and there was a lot more adult language in that this too. one. It was so a more adult film. Obviously, it doesn't bother us as adults, but if you were looking to take your whole family, that might be something you need to take into consideration. For me, it's going to be very similar to hers, but it's it's more of a kind of complex issue, and it's around this idea of spirituality and gods and all that kind of stuff. You know, for us as Christians, that obviously has certain context that we just won't dive into deep here unless you guys want to talk about that privately sometime. We're obviously open to sharing that. But I think the important thing to understand with this, you need to keep it within the context on both sides of whatever part of the equation you fall on that. Like, this is just a, a comic book movie about a fantasy world that right. doesn't exist. Yes, it mirrors us. It's about Earth and Earthlings and all that kind of stuff and the heroes that reside there, but it's within that. The also side, you know, I think it's kind of 
troublesome to get focused on is this stuff actually what happens in real life you know like are these different gods and all this kind of stuff not true so it's just one of those things keep it in context but it can be one of those things that could be off-putting or confusing on either side of the aisle if you want to think about it that way just enjoy it's a marvel film superhero film have fun with it just have that information going in all right favorite major character for you um obviously thor there there is no greater character i had a feeling you were gonna pick thor and i want to pick him as well so do it but it's a movie about him how are you gonna pick somebody that's not thor in thor's movie because it happens a lot of time on if you watch some of our you know three reasons to watch series okay. i am actually gonna pick jane foster aka okay. the mighty thor i did not it's not that i didn't think i was gonna like this version of her or the character i I, just because I like Thor so much, right? Yeah. But I found myself really liking how she embraces her becoming the mighty Thor. Okay. And almost how gung-ho she was about it. And overly gung-ho about it to the point of catchphrases and things like yeah. that. It just, it kind of took some of the things that we now love about the Thor character. And put it into her about just kind of being serious but silly at the same sure. time. So that's why she's my favorite major character. Your favorite minor character. Um, I'm gonna go with Peter Quill. I, I love him. I love all of the Guardians. So just the fact that he was in this movie really set it apart for me. And even though I'm not wearing a Guardians t-shirt. You are wearing a Guardians t-shirt. I am wearing a Guardians t-shirt. Excuse me, I was thinking Thor in my head because I don't have a Thor. I'm wearing, I'm not, even though I'm wearing this, I'm not gonna pick a Guardian uh, character. I, I really struggled honestly with who I should pick in this category. Um, I did like Heimdall's son because uh, he got, it was kind of a surprise about how big of a character um, he was there, but I'm gonna pick a really random one. Okay. Two, actually. The goats. Oh! The screaming goats. Those were amazing. I already forgot about them. I thought they would get annoying with the screaming the entire time, but no. it just, it, it Tyke is so good at this. The comedic timing was so good. Ah! Every single time. It was just, yeah. I, I found myself laughing every single time the goats came on screen. Yeah. Screamed. <laughs> Screamed on, screamed on screen. That's alliteration. Too much of say. that on this. All right, final thing, rewatchability rating, one through five. One, I would be, I would never go see this again in theaters. Two. Or I'd never watch it at all again. That's true. Or five, I would going to rush out to go see this right now. Where are you on that scale? I'm a solid three. Yeah. Which is about as high as you can get for a Marvel movie for me. Um, so I didn't hate it. Didn't, I probably won't watch it again ever, but I enjoyed the two hours that I watched it. I would say a three as well, but I'm not, I'm kind of describing it a little bit differently that I could be very easily convinced to go see this one again because it was very enjoyable. Okay. But it's like, oh yeah, I saw it in theaters. I'll watch it again when it comes out on Disney Plus and I'm fine with that. Like, I don't feel like I missed anything. This isn't one of those like deep layered things that yeah. I have to go like, you know, Multiverse of Madness, even though I didn't go see it again. That is one where I could be like, wow, I. That's true. I did enjoy Multiverse of Madness a little more just because it was a little deeper. Yeah, a little more complex, all that kind like of stuff. Like I could see seeing that in theaters again. Yeah. But actual enjoyability, I enjoyed Love and Thunder more than that. Yeah. I, I think it's fair to, sense. yeah, I think it's fair just for different reasons for us to both put it at three. So yeah. solid movie. Yeah. I would definitely recommend, especially if you're a Marvel superhero fan, going to see it in theaters because it's an action film. It was, yeah. And it it's obviously fun to see Marvel movies with, a, you know, a theater full of people. And people clapping and, and laughing with you. Yeah. You know? It's yeah. kind of awkward when you're the only one in the theater going. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not like when you see a romantic comedy and there's nothing you know, to actually get excited about it with the crowd. So Wow, dang. So that's her opinion about romantic comedies. No, I love romantic comedies. That's like my favorite genre. But I'm just saying, like, you don't have to see those in theaters. Fair there's, point. Fair there's point. no reason to see that in a theater. Fair point. Unless you just want to go on a date somewhere. Anyway, we keep digressing. I would know since nobody takes me out. That is not true whatsoever. We're not. Oh, my goodness. Before this, like, goes down the hill even more. We would like to know from you in the comments section what you thought about Thor. You can rate it on that rewatchability scale, one through five, if you'd like to. Just try to keep your comments as spoiler-free as possible. If it is a spoiler comment that you bring, just maybe throw the spoiler thing in front of it so people know, hey, steer clear of this. I want to keep it as a safe space for those that just kind of want to talk about it and get some ideas on if they want to see it. But keep that conversation going down below. What else should I do? Like I said before, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. That's all we have for you in this edition of Eye to Eye. Until we assemble again, may the force be with you. And we'll see you real soon. Bye, guys.